You know, I am indeed fortunate to have a front row seat at our convention every year. It gives me the opportunity to be up close during the many outstanding speeches that are part of our program. And one of my, va and one of my very favorite speeches every year is delivered by Vice President Kathleen Donahue. I look forward to Kathleen's remarks because as the officer who oversees NYSIT's program services, she reminds us just how diverse NYSIT is, how diverse we have become, and the incredible work being done by our members, both in service and retired, and in so many fields of expertise. Kathleen shares with us the many ways you and your members back home touch the lives of New Yorkers for the New Yorkers that we serve each and every day. It is such an inspiring message. Just as inspiring has been your responsibility to the needs created by Superstorm Sandy, as we've been talking about today. And so before I call Kathleen up, I want to again thank her for the generosity and all the work that she has put into overseeing the Sandy, the Superstorm Sandy relief work. Thank you, Kathleen. They have worked, she has worked so hard, along with Secretary Treasurer Lee Cutler, has worked so hard to ensure that the funds for the infrastructure needed to begin helping our members get back is available. A job unbelievably difficult, but a job well done. So delegates, it gives me great pleasure to welcome a true voice for every member as an individual and in solidarity. Please welcome Vice President Kathleen Donahue. Thank you. Thank you, Dick. When I stood before you last year, I spoke of Al Shanker's Keep the Clock speech. It was in that speech that he reminded us our organization is a wonderful work of art, and if destroyed, it will never be put together again. To each of us goes the responsibility of preventing our organization from being destroyed. We have numerous enemies out there, some more easily identifiable than others, but all are equally as destructive. They wish to see our organization shattered and defeated. Our task is to see that they do not succeed. You have heard me speak of the strength we have in our union, strength gained over many years of careful, strategic collaboration, both internally and externally. Fostering and organizing new allies, we have grown from a union of 207,000 in 1973 to more than 600,000 today. Give yourselves a round of applause, that's right. As an officer of this great union, I represent all of you. But I want to take time today to talk about those components with which I deal most closely. I'll begin with our SRPs, school-related professionals. What would we do without them? They are the bus drivers, the food service workers, the custodians who daily provide for the needs of our students. They are the secretaries who keep the offices running smoothly and the paras who help students survive their daily challenges. They are the school safety officers who are on the front lines of the schools when problems arise. SRPs make a difference and we are making sure that the public knows it. This year, we rolled out the SRPs Make a Difference campaign. The goal is to have every region in the state represented and participating. We want to make communities realize the importance of our SRPs and to value their contribution to school communities. 
Nice that SRPs spend countless hours advancing their professions through participation in education and learning trust programs and staff development programs. Many attend our annual SRP conference designed specifically by our NYSIT SRP advisory committee. They are using technology and social networking to share their ideas and the programs with one another. Whether it's bus regulations, testing tips, or safety plans, SRPs are stepping up, tackling the problems head on, and fighting to get the problems resolved. I couldn't be more proud of the work that they have done this year, and I know that they will continue to do it as we move forward. Thank you, SRPs. And how about those retirees? Yeah. Every person in this room owes an enormous debt of gratitude to our retirees. We are here because they had the vision and the guts and the wherewithal to build this union. We stand on their shoulders. Through their fight for collective bargaining, the passage of the Taylor Law and the Triborough Amendment, to the COLA legislation and the promise for affordable health care for all, they remain a force to be reckoned with. Retirees are the members who continue to blaze the trail before us. They are leading the fight for Medicaid, Medicare, and Social Security protections, not only to secure their own futures, but the futures of all generations. They are our daytime union, out there knocking on doors and making phone calls. They raised thousands of dollars for Vote Cope, and they continue to reach in their pockets to provide for disaster relief. Retirees preserve the past while protecting our future. Get to know the retirees in your region. Learn from them. Help them learn from you. Together, it will only make us stronger. Give it up for our retirees. <laughs> then there are our health care professionals, 15,000 members strong. They spend their time and their energy making our lives better, whether it's the nurse, the psychologist, counselor, speech therapist in the school building, or the floor nurse therapist, or higher education faculty in our hospitals. These are the members that are dedicated to providing the best possible care to their patients. Patients who are oftentimes family members or colleagues. Yet they are also the members who devote their hours and hours of volunteer work to improve their professions and to make our union stronger. Our Health Care Professionals Council works intensely and tirelessly along with the NYSIT staff to create the Professional Issues Forum, a yearly event designed to give our members quality educational opportunities to strengthen their skills. They can receive CEUs, continuing education units, while enjoying time with colleagues and meeting new friends. Healthcare workers and members of our healthcare professions wage political battles, going toe to toe with legislators. Their legislative agenda includes fighting for safe patient handling safe staffing for quality care, and minimum school nurse staffing standards. They also fight for fair funding and working conditions for our members who work in the home care settings. 
every one of these initiatives that becomes a law has had an impact on the quality of our lives. Let's work with our healthcare professionals. Reach out and give support to that overworked school nurse or the undervalued home health care worker. They're working to make your life better, and let's help them do it. Thank you, health care professionals. Let's also give a shout out to our BOCES constituents. Though they are often the members spread across large geographic areas in many different buildings, they work to strengthen the union and support each other in facing the numerous challenges of their unique workplace. Often our BOCES members provide for the very demanding specialized needs of students. They sometimes work one-on-one -on -one and require training not always easily available. Our BOCES members provide career skills for students who thrive on hands-on instruction and skilled-focused tasks. They are the greatest advocates for some of our neediest students. They work to make their profession stronger and to make their union stronger in order to make a positive difference in the lives of their students and colleagues. Aren't we proud to call them our brothers and sisters? While I'm focusing on constituents, let me not forget our higher education members. UUP, PSC, private higher ed, and our community colleges. Through the past year, we have stood, NYSA has stood shoulder to shoulder with our higher ed members as they face their own special challenges. Funding cuts, the threats we've seen to Downstate Medical Hospital, and the challenging working conditions for adjuncts are some of the battles that they have faced. Yet they stand strong, refusing to allow private corporate greed to win out. We support their efforts. We send faxes, make phone calls, participate in rallies, because we are union, and an injustice to one of us is an injustice to all of us. Higher education is the path to success and fulfillment of the American dream. And we will continue to work to provide students the quality higher education that they deserve. We will continue to work to provide opportunities for staff development and networking. We will continue to work to reach the goal of making higher education accessible to all. And we will continue to stand strong with you, our higher education members. OK, now you're probably thinking I'm going through all the possible groups that we have, all those constituencies. Well, not so. Each of us is important, and each of us is appreciated. So I want to turn my focus to some of the programs provided within the NYSET program services and how they foster and strengthen the growth of our union. These are especially tough budget times, we know that. But we have made it our goal to preserve and strengthen the programs our members have come to rely on. Whether you are in a small rural local, a suburban local, or a large city local, NYSA Program Services supports what you do. Our health and safety staff works closely with our regional offices and with individual locals to provide information and support when problems arise. It may be as simple as a technical assistance problem or as complicated as an asbestos removal. Our staff is trained to assist you in addressing these issues. But the most critical responsibility is to ensure that every local has a plan in place 
for handling emergencies. Preparedness, prevention, response, and recovery are the cornerstones for these plans. We have all seen the tragedies splashed across the media, raising havoc and ruining lives. We don't want our members caught off guard. Help us to help you. We are there for the victims of Hurricane Irene and Lee. And we were there for the victims of Superstorm Sandy. And we will be there when the next disaster strikes. Our social services staff is also a part of program services. Working for our members and their families. With a database of over 8,000 agencies, we are able to connect members with the best possible assistance. Supporting members in times of tragedies, as we did in Newtown, or walking them through the changing terrain of health insurance, program services staff members are confidential, compassionate, and professional. NYSET's health benefits specialist works with regional offices and local leaders to understand the challenging world of health insurance. The ability to compare benefits, co-pays, HMOs, and a myriad of insurances assist these specialists, excuse me, these specialists assist our locals in negotiations. With continual changes at both the state and federal levels, it is critical that you have the most up-to-the-minute information. That's what we provide for you. Lastly, I want to mention two gold standard programs, the NYSET Leadership Program and the NYSET LAP Program. The Leadership Institute is a unique opportunity to help grow the union by immersing our new leaders in an intensive training program that draws on experience, expertise, and the energy of leading labor leaders, academic staff, and NYSET staff. Our local action project is a program developed by NYSET to help locals become high-functioning, high-quality, effective unions. These LAP team members continue to demonstrate the dedication and commitment necessary to achieve remarkable results. Both of these high-quality programs further help to grow and strengthen our union. Information about these programs is contained in your RA kit, and watch for the applications to be out in the fall and online. I've shared with you my thoughts on the enemies that we face, but I've also shared with you what I see in our members that I work with every single day. Their strength, their passion, their dedication to build a stronger union and make the lives of those that they touch better. I leave you with this thought from an American Nobel Peace Prize recipient, Jody Williams. I believe words are easy. I believe that the truth is told in the actions that we take. And I believe that if enough ordinary people back up our desire for a better world with action, I believe, in fact, that we can accomplish absolutely extraordinary things. We are all ordinary NYSET members doing extraordinary things. I know that together we can go out and change the world, and we will begin it on June 8th in Albany. Thank you very much. <laughs>